Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The next thing uh, as far as the uh, RV remodel is to replace this particle board with a trim coming off of it. Redo this stick on black splash. So many of you have RVs uh, 10 years old or so, probably have similar items in your camper. So the idea is I have Corian, uh, bone colored Corian. And this is going to be the new countertop material. This is bone colored Corian, and it's the same material I used in the induction cooktop uh, swing out on the outdoor kitchen of this camper. So, my idea is I'm going to leave the sink, the sink's going to stay. I'm going to redo, pull this particle board out, use it as a template, fabricate the Corian up, and our Dometic, actually, it's a suburban stove is going to go bye-bye so i'm in the process of tearing it out right now i'll cap this gas line off and what's going to go in as an induction cooktop uh right there just the exact same one i did on the uh the outdoor kitchen swing out so i will put the link of that video in the description so the stove's going to come out solid surface all the way across i'm going to embed flush mount an induction cooktop because i have so much solar power on this camper with 600 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate battery and so on. I'll also put the link for that video in the description. But uh, we never use the stove. We've had this camper now 10 years and we've never cooked on it. Plus these burners are so small you can't put a big pan on it. So I'm going to put just one big induction cooktop right in the center and be done with it. Um, the stove, we've never used it down below either the oven. And uh, the idea is we're going to continue the cooktop, I mean the, uh, the countertop across, put the cooktop in, stove's coming out, and this space down below here we're going to turn into an appliance garage. And inside there we're going to keep our Keurig, we're going to keep the Instapot and the air fryer. Next step is to get this out, and I kind of figured it out that uh, a couple screws along the side, two on the bottom here. And then here's the uh, propane line come in, so make sure to turn off propane. And then I have some caps to cap that off. Very similar to when I did the uh, compressor-based refrigerator capped that propane off. So I'll also put the link for that video in the description if you want to see how I converted from uh, an absorption-type propane refrigerator to a compressor-type Everchill. Um, and we just absolutely love that refrigerator. So the only thing on this camper it's going to be powered by propane will be the heater and the hot water heater and that's it i have 1500 watts of solar up on the roof look at a previous video i'll put the link of that one in there too 3000 watt of inverter power so i have plenty enough energy to, to do all this so let's go ahead and get started please like share and subscribe and uh please look at my other playlist on e-bikes uh, all my solar projects, my car restorations, my hot rod builds, and uh, let's get to it. This is the 3 8 inch flare pipe plug, and I'll put the link, the Amazon link, in the description. And uh, just simply uh, cap this off, and then I'm ready to pull the stove off. The stove is out, and wow, look at all the room in here. This is going to be a nice appliance garage. And next, I need to tear the countertop off. All right, back in the fabrication shop. I tore the counter out, which is pretty easy to do. And uh, came out in two pieces, actually. And typically what they do is there's going to be pocket screws that are every so often underneath the particle board that are going to anchor it into the, uh, anchor it into the wall hopefully hit the stud. But here's the sink out. I get it all scrubbed up. And I ordered a new faucet, which I'll put the link in the description for all the stuff I'm using. And here's the bottom. So typical sink with the brackets to hold it in. And what I'm gonna do is take the sink out. I'll lay this upside down. And here's my solid surface material, Corian, which I just really enjoy working with could use just regular power tools, drills, jigsaw, uh, a typical router with a carbide bit on it to route the edges. But you can go to your local fabrication shop, 
and just ask for a piece of Corian. I mean, there's all kinds of different patterns you could choose from. And it looks like that's probably millimeters thick, but a little over a half inch thick. And this is bone color, not white. It's like an off-white called bone. But I'm using, I use that on my outside swing out induction cooktop for the outdoor kitchen also. So what I'm going to do is take a sheet of this, lay it down on the horses here. I'll turn this upside down and I'll trace the cutout that I need for the sink. And then I also have a mark for the uh, pattern for the induction cooktop. So uh, let's go into time warp on my GoPro and... Uh, So I got the cabinets all prepped for the new countertop, solid surface countertop, and I did have to put some uh, wood across here with the pocket screws into the studs because the original ones were stapled to the back of the particle board. So if you're going to do this, uh, it's, this is easy. You put it in there and then I continue to piece across here and here. Uh, also, since I'm going to have an inductive cooktop, I needed a plug right here so I can plug in the inductive cooktop and I'm just going to let this hang. I'll probably put a clamp on it in the back at some point in time, but this is going to be a nice appliance garage. The Instapot's going to go in there, the curd coffee maker, the air fryer, and this piece of wood here I actually got from when I put the new refrigerator in there was the crossbar across there. So that was like 24 inches and this is like 20 inches. So just cut off the ends, glued everything nice and sturdy. And uh, that'll look good from the front. So let's go ahead and try the top, see if it fits. Hopefully I didn't screw up on my measurements. Oh man, this is gonna look nice. Get rid of that old particle board. Fits like a glove. Oh, <laughs> check that out. That is gorgeous. Wow, that is nice. Check it out. All that old particle board's gone. And then this stick and black backsplash is going to come off and I have new backsplash to go in, but nice and smooth this is going to be fantastic 
And then I'll do the bathroom and then the outdoor kitchen top, get rid of that particle board. Next project is the bathroom. Got this little crappy sink in here with a plastic sink. I'm going to a stainless steel oval bowl and then uh, the Corian uh, is going to replace that. So the next thing is to get this out. I'll see if there's a couple pocket screws holding it. Undo the fittings. And the nice thing about the RV is the water and the, the drain connection. Usually they have those big uh, levers on there so you just twist them off by hand. You don't even need a pair of pliers or anything. So here's up underneath my bathroom sink. Get some light on the subject along with my mouse traps in there which could be another video and there's my water fittings and it looks just like there's a couple pocket screws that's all it's holding this top on right here two over there oh great looks like the sides also on there and then it looks like there's these little fittings so uh don't know how much of this i'm going to record but uh i'm going to get this out of here all right, I got all the pocket screws and you see where the formica is lifting from the particle board from a little bit of water leak. And take a cutting knife and score around the outside to release the silicone. And it is out of here. So like I said, these cleats are nailed on here around the outside edge so I've got some new wood and I'll make up a couple pieces of rail and use the same screw holes around the outside perimeter then I'm ready to set the Corian on and also we hated this big gap stuff would keep falling down here so I'm extending the Corian out almost maybe about a quarter of an inch away from it the shower glass here so so let's go get the top fab Countertops are fabricated and what's beautiful about this stuff as I mentioned earlier you can just use a jigsaw that you have at your house your table saw uh, recommend carbide uh, tips on uh, all your blades but and then uh, just a regular router put the bevel on the edge but uh, so I've got it all mocked up in place um, I need to glue it down which is gonna be the next step but everything's just kind of loose in here ready to go everything fits um, also made a shelf in here this was this Luan stuff underneath here uh, it wasn't strong enough a little bit flimsy to hold the uh, appliance garage appliances and I had a piece left over from the section I cut out uh, for the sink and I basically fabricated it uh, fit down and become a bottom shelf just slid it in and I need to glue it and then I'm going to upholster a piece of plywood here for the side panel and that'll finish that up. But uh, everything looking great on that. Come into the bathroom and the vanity sink just sitting there right now. But uh, went to a stainless steel oval, got rid of that piece of plastic that was in here. Uh, new faucet. Again, everything's mocked up. Everything fits perfect around the edges. And I'll get that mounted here also. I like using the GE silicone, um, just clear, and I'll put a couple beads uh, all the way around. You can see I have my cleats in here that I was missing before. Screw it in, did the same thing in the kitchen, and uh, ready to put this and set the counter. And it's warm enough now here in Colorado that uh, the silicone should cure, and it's gonna be 65 tomorrow, so should be good temperature. That's why I waited to do it. Make sure you're probably above 60 degrees when you do this so the silicone can cure okay. But uh, let me see if I can get a camera angle here and uh, let's get the silicone down and get the, uh, the top set.
That is done. Let this sit overnight, let it harden up, and then I can uh, put all the sinks back in and the faucets, get everything plumbed up, and that's going to be it. It's going to be done. Time to get rid of this hideous backsplash stick them on type whatever this is, cellophane. So uh, get rid of this and then I have this really cool stick on backsplash that I'm going to show you how to do and this is just a really quick upgrade for an existing RV without replacing the countertops if you just want to do an update. Uh, I got this on Amazon and it's Vamos tile. To get this off, I have my Dewalt heat gun, which I was hesitant on buying this thing, thinking that, man, it's just going to burn through batteries, but I'm using the heck out of this, so I'll just heat it up, and this is for you guys that have your 20 volt max um, Dewalt tools, and I am impressed on how long the battery lasts. So laying out the tile backsplash here, and we're going to go up here and then stop at the edge of the hood, and then come down and we're going to come up kind of where the old border used to be, four inches up or so, and then end at the end of the countertops, another four inches across here. This stuff is nice. Um, the alternative is actually using glass tile, but in an RV you can't have the weight, and then you'd have to do backer board and like you do in a house, but uh, this stuff is great. All right, looking good here. Just put this stainless steel vinyl trim around it. Looking good, and in the bathroom, got the top trimmed out all the way around. And uh, this stuff's pretty cool. It's vinyl, and it comes in different colors, brass and black, And but I chose the stainless. And you can see the end there, it's got like a little recess there to lap over the edge of the tile. But uh, that's about an eighth of an inch. And you just peel it off. And believe me, it definitely sticks. I had to pull a couple pieces off and uh, reposition them. And man, this, this whatever's on here is really holds well. Anyway, it's all trimmed up. Uh, one little trick when you're laying this tile, it comes in 12 by 12 sections. And start your section there. But do a running bond, like how you lay brick. You know, how you overlap a brick. And so I have a piece here, a piece here, and then I put the piece in the center of that seam and then filled in the left and the right. Because if you don't do that, these patterns aren't going to match up. And uh, you see I got a nice uh, residential type spigot here. I'll put that in. I believe it's Hampton Bay. Um, and it pulls down, which is really cool. And... Um, the thing to note though, the RV fittings on the end of the pecs, they're usually half inch. Yours might differ, check it out. But the residential type hose requires a 3 8 inch uh, flare to go into. So I'll put the link in the description of a half inch pipe thread to a 3 8 inch flare. Just little adapters, they're not much, but you will need them. Put them on top of the pecs and then screw the uh, flexible hose right on the top of that. And then you're good to go. So... Uh, I got my induction cooktop here, which I used. Uh, check out my other video where I did it outside on my outdoor kitchen, uh, the swing out arm. And it just plugs in there. Um, so this is really cool. You could take it out, put it on a picnic table. But I have the one outside to use. And then I liked it so much I bought a third one as a backup. But uh, these are amazing. Uh, my appliance garage down here, it's going to have, it's got the air fryer, which we use a lot. If you don't have one of those, you got to get one. My Instapot, i got some tools in there now, and then the curd goes underneath here. And that'll finish it up, so I'm actually using all that wasted space, that stove. Plus, 
when I'm cooking, I'm not dealing with the propane and the water vapor and everything coming off the top of this because all the heat's right in the pan. Even though I do have an exhaust hood that goes right to right to the outside. So I think I'm going to wrap it up. I need to do the countertop. This Corian is just fantastic, as I showed you. Just use regular hand tools, jigsaw. And then my router, I used a 45-inch. 45-inch. <laughs> and my router, take two. My router, I used a 45-degree bevel and just put a bevel 45 degrees on this edge and just take regular sandpaper and soften it up on the edges. But man, it turned out super nice. And the one in the bathroom, uh, put a little curve on here. I extended it over almost to the shower door. And then I brought it out the front just a little bit uh, just to give it just a little bit more surface area for putting stuff. But uh Worked out good, so you can go to your local fabricator, whatever town you're in, that handles Corian, and just get uh, your measurements and get a rough cut already made. Um, I got this from Fabrication LLC. If you're in Denver, talk to Tyler, ask for Tyler, and he'll hook you up. But I just got rough cut Corian to the size I needed, and the edges were real nice already. Um, here I had to put the curve on with a jigsaw, as you saw in the video. And then just route it, cut your holes, and you're good to go. So here's the appliance garage. I got the Keurig. There's an Instapot behind there. And our air fryer, which is amazing. We'll actually use all this stuff. But uh, to keep everything from rattling out in case it hits the floor. But these are pretty solid, pretty heavy. But I just have one of these little spring-loaded uh, crossbar, like a curtain rod. It goes in here, and that's really strong. And just pull it in and out when I'm traveling. So I did a demonstration on my other video, but uh, let's get a paper towel here. And I'm gonna put this down on the induction cooktop burner. I'm gonna sit my pot on top of it. That's well, pretty centered. I'm gonna pour in some of my bottled water here. We'll see how long this takes to boil. So turn on my cooktop. Goes up to number 10. And I'm not gonna edit the speed or anything. This is real time. I could really see the thermals in the water forming in about 10 seconds. So this is real time. I'm not editing and speeding up the video at all and I have bubbles forming. There we go, we're starting to boil already. Pretty amazing, this is probably faster than a microwave. And uh, it's really starting to get going here. Pretty incredible, cooking uh, off of my batteries on my inverter that charges up with my uh, five 315 watt solar panels on the RV. Check out my other link on how I did the solar and uh, rocking and rolling here. It's pretty amazing. All right. We've got a good boil going, and again, this is real time. And uh, there we go. Lots of bubbles and steam. And as soon as I turn the power off, I'll finish this up. And uh, the paper towel isn't even warm. I mean, it's just like I pulled it off the paper towel holder. So time to do the outdoor kitchen uh, countertop now. And here's my swing out arm that I did about a year ago with the bone colored uh, Corian. And here's my induction cooktop 
that's outside. It also pulls out, plugs in, just uh, it's the same unit as the one inside. And um, first I'm gonna take the sink out. I need to remove the backsplash. I need to pull the refrigerator out, which I did a couple anchor bolts um, to hold it in before they had some strap from the factory you had to put on every time you wanted to go in another refrigerator. So, so I redid it. So here's the tab that I made, uh, just out of a piece of flat steel. Went into the hot rod, the fabrication shop, just cut me a piece of that and notched it out. And what it's doing is it's sliding into this leg uh, that's on the back of the uh, refrigerator. And I have this on both sides and that bolts it down. So very simple to make. Progress, the refrigerator's out. Got the sink out and disconnected. And these are your half inch little connectors. Uh, just spin them off by hand. And then you got this butyl rubber around the edge, which I need to take off. The next thing is to get that backsplash out of there and then I'm good to go. I'll bring the Corian over, set it on top, trace my cutout where I need, and my anchor holes over in here there and there and uh, this is going very quick man this is looking great this is going so fast so I put the dabs of silicon about every four inches put a glob and then set the countertop on and painted the uh, edge of the uh, formica there flat black but uh, I just need uh, the particle board underneath here to give it strength because that refrigerator weighs quite a bit when you get drinks and stuff in it um, so this is going to be extremely solid so next get the sink in that's fast it is done Turned out really good. Hey guys, hope that gave you a couple ideas on, on different ways you can replace your countertops. And again, a lot of RVs, especially the older ones, don't have solid surface. They just have particle board for mica crappy looking stuff, but huge cosmetic change that you can make to your camper uh, immediately. And it's easy to do as I showed in the videos uh, with normal hand tools you might have around the shop already. So, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, my next video, I think the last upgrade I'm going to do is uh, I got some upgrades to the uh, inverter and stuff that I'm going to be doing on the solar power. But that'll be the next video. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate you watching, hanging out. Leave some comments. I read all the comments, and I'll answer you back if you have any questions on what I just did or any of my other videos. I'd be happy to, to help you out. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks for watching.